Okay, welcome to Python Request Module, just the basics with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Before we begin, a quick shout out to all of my channel members. Special thanks to Kevin and Paul for making it to six months of support. Could not do it without you. Thanks to everybody else who has subscribed, commented, thumbs up, whatever you call it, liked, and uh, yeah, joined as members. Thanks so much, everybody. Anyway, today's lesson is the Python Request Module. And I'm not going to do yeah, too, too much with it, but I'm just going to help you get started with it and show you kind of how it works, at least a little bit of it. And the request module is something that usually, at least in my case, it did not come with Python, so I actually had to uh, install it afterwards uh, from PyPy. And if you don't have the request module, the way to install it is to open up a terminal, and depending on the way your computer is set up, you would type pip uh, install uh, requests. And notice it's requests, not singular, not one request. Let's try it and see what happens. Okay, pip not found. So I'm gonna go ahead and try pip three on my computer. And you can see, okay, that's doing a little bit more. It says requirement already satisfied because I have already installed this uh, previous to making the video. So you should see some things there. You might also, if you're on Linux, you might have to put sudo. Uh, I'm not sure what the Windows equivalent to that would be, but you know, check that out for your operating system. So assuming that this is installed, what it lets us do is it lets us act, you know, contact websites, send information back and forth, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you basically how to do just that. Now, in preparation for that, I've set up a very simple Python script on my web server. And I'll show you, I'll put the address in here later when we do the code. But there's just a very simple file, and it's called dictionary.py. Now, if I am trying to send information to this, this particular script takes one argument, and it is word, and equals, and I'm going to do apple. Okay, I'm going to do that lowercase. I'm not sure if it matters or not. But what this will do is it will send to my web server this dictionary py file in my server and I'm sending English so Apple and it's returning Japanese so Ringo uh, like Ringo Starr is the Japanese word for Apple and so I'm not sure what other words I don't have that many words and there's just a few uh, I think I have bear and uh, Kuma is bear I forget what C word I did um, D of course I did dog um, you know so just a few Japanese words are listed in this file. I should do more, but this is just a demonstration. So here I'm using a web server, or excuse me, a web browser, and the question mark and word equals dog. So my Python script is looking for word, and the value of word in this case is dog. And it's, as you can see, it is returning the Japanese equivalent, uh, written in English characters, unfortunately, but that'll make life easy. So let's go ahead and do that in code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do import requests. And notice it's requests, not a singular requests. Uh, and then what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and say what my URL is. And my URL in this case is https colon slash slash christianthompson.com slash dictionary dot py. And that is that. Well, what I could do, I could do it like this. I could do question word equals apple. And I could add it just like that. And then what we'll do is I'll say response equals uh, request. I think it's get. Ooh. Actually, I should have looked this up before I did this. But let's try it. Ah, it seems like it's right. URL. Now, this response is a response object. It's not like a, it's not a string. It's not text. So. I can print out a couple things. I can say print. I'm going to do an F string here, quote, and I'll say, uh, you know, what's it called? Uh, response code. I think it's called response code. And quote, and we'll say here response dot response code. That's not response code. What is it? Um, well, that's why I opened this up. Um, it is. It's in here somewhere. Um, I'll put this link in the things below. Um, all right, read the docs. Let's go check out the docs. Status code, that's what it is. Uh, status code. And it's response.status code. 
and 200 means all good, 404 means file not found, 500 something is usually a server error, etc., etc. But what we want is we want to say, we want to see the actual response, so the Japanese translation. So that's going to be response.txt. Okay, so I'm going to save it, and watch down here. I'm going to go ahead and run it. You can see that you can see there was a little bit of a delay, and that's because it was actually contacting my remote web server, christianthompson.com, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the response, the status code was 200, which means no problem. Now I didn't need to print that. I was just printing it to show you that that does exist. And then the text is what it actually printed back to me. So I'm able to send information, and then I'm able to return it just like that. Now. Um, we don't want to do this every single time, especially if we want to send more than one uh, parameter. So what I can do is I can make a direct dictionary, params. It doesn't have to be called params. I could have called it p, um, but parameters, per, params, params. Uh, this is what's been recommended. And it is word and apple. This is just a standard dictionary. Notice there's no spaces or anything. And then I need to add here params. So that saves me from having to put question blah, blah, blah equals and encoding it a certain way. So let's go ahead and test it. Just make sure it's working. Oops, invalid syntax. What did I do? Oh, I got two equal signs. And let's try that again. And again, you see that little bit of a delay where it's trying to get the information. Now I'm going to go ahead and change that to a, try a different one. Bear, I think we mentioned earlier. Again, a little bit of a delay. And then there is Kuma which is the Japanese word for bear. Now, if I didn't send anything, let's see what happens there. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so status code 200, but there was just nothing was sent because it didn't know what that particular word was. And I think that's about it. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you about this. Um, feel free to use this URL in testing your code. Um, now, you might want to do something like, you know, uh, you know, for example, word equals, you know, input, you know, what word, you know, would you like to translate, you know, for example, and then in here, I would put word, because that's the variable. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm not sure if I haven't tested it, but let's try it out. Okay, what word would you like to translate? Uh, let's go ahead and do apple, since we know that works. And you can see I entered apple, and it gave me Ringo back. Ringo, I should say, to pronounce it correctly. Um, let's try it again, and let's do uh, let's do a word that's not in there. I don't think cat's in there, because I'm a dog person. And you can see it returned none. This is what I told it to return if the word didn't exist. So that's on the server side. So that is basically that. Um, now, using this request module, you could pull in you know the HTML from any web page that you wanted to, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so that's it. Um, it's very short. The code is only a few lines long, and it's it's quite a useful and powerful uh, module. So I hope you uh, yeah find some uh, you know good uses for this. Uh, white hat, not black hat hacking. Okay, take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye bye.